I've done over a million dollars in revenue on Etsy, but this year I've also been getting about $1,500 to $3,000 each and every month on Amazon Merch On Demand, with about one to five minutes of work in the Amazon Ads platform. And as I've been selling on both marketplaces for quite a while, I've noticed that there are major differences between the two marketplaces. And as Amazon just launched their Printify integration, I thought this would be a great time to just speak on the top five reasons on why I would do Amazon Print On Demand instead of Etsy Print On Demand in 2025. Let's get into it. So the first reason would basically be because Amazon has the biggest market share in e-commerce overall, which is kind of crazy. The biggest market share by far, by any platform, by any means, is Amazon. I mean, they cover up at least 30%. I'm not sure of the validity of this specific statistic, but at least 30% from what I've known previously as well is just held by Amazon. If you just think about it, if anyone shops online on any page, at least 30% of every sale is on Amazon. And that's just insane. So that's the first thing. I mean, they hold the biggest market share in e-commerce overall, which basically means their in-house traffic is something that you can take part of if you do print on demand on Amazon in 2025. And the other thing that I really want to get across is that it's not as volatile as Etsy. At least that's not been my experience with doing Amazon Merch on Demand. It feels a lot more stable compared to Etsy. The amount of videos that I've seen from so many different creators, whether they're at like one subscriber or like a couple thousand subscribers or several hundred thousands of subscribers I've just seen all over the place people that has lost their Etsy shop for different types of reasons and sometimes just such small reasons for instance Vlad from talk shop I followed his channel for quite a while when he lost his shop this past Q4 in 2023 not sure if I can but if I can I'll link his video about this up here and up here but basically he had some outstanding balance from an old Etsy shop that he hasn't been logged into for quite a while because of that at the worst possible time they closed down all of his shops including his main basically like Etsy shop where he has employees and and like stuff and equipment and stuff like that. He lost a lot of the Q4 earnings, if not the major part of it, I think, because of this specific suspension, which is just crazy. I earn almost as much, either as much or almost as much as I've made throughout the whole year up until Q4 in just Q4 alone. So it's just a huge part of sales during a year that gets lost if you're not part of Q4, which he couldn't be because he was randomly suspended because of some outstanding balance. Balanced. And the crazy part about this is that he paid it, but he still couldn't get back and it was really hard to get a hold of them and everything. And in my experience, like when I started Etsy, the first thing that happened that happens to a lot of people was that I got suspended. So I put up my first listing, which you need to do when you actually have an Etsy store. Nowadays, you need to pay $15 to even have an Etsy store. But back then, you didn't need to do that. Yeah, and then they just suspended me, which was just kind of crazy. At that time, I really needed to make this work. So I did everything I could just to get it back. I think I found some kind of phone number somewhere were and I called them and then that got me my account back. But I hadn't done absolutely nothing and then it got suspended. Another time that it got suspended was when I listed, I think I listed between 60 and 70 listings in one in the same day. And that got me suspended as well because I think they thought that I was a bot. Then I got my account back after a couple of days. The most important thing that I want to get across is that it's really a volatile marketplace to be a part of, in my opinion. I made almost all my money there and I'm super grateful for that. It's basically the thing that's made me kind of financially relaxed, so to speak and so I'm really grateful for what it's given me but at the same time it's given also induced a lot of stress because you don't know what can happen at any time because of something weird with their algorithm or something like that yeah but the thing that I want to get across the most it's always felt very volatile I've heard too many stories about people losing their shops over something either small or something like that. The worst part about it is that it is for me, it's my livelihood. Having your livelihood ripped out of you with no way of actually getting in contact with them or if there is a way, it's super hard to get in contact with them to just fix stuff. They can just pull the rug from under you at any point. It's always like a constant stress. It's gotten easier for sure with time because you can't control that so there's nothing to think about. But every time I hear something from Etsy, like a positive message from Etsy that I've just gotten, I've always just just felt a super big like lump in my stomach because something bad could happen if you see like the message from Etsy. My overall opinion is that Etsy can be a very volatile marketplace and as long as I've been on Merch on Demand it's felt a lot more stable like their guidelines and everything are clear compared to Etsy which I'll get into more later on. But another thing that's really huge that I really want to emphasize and that's that you can actually exit or sell an Amazon business which you can with an Etsy shop. So even if I wanted to I couldn't actually sell my Etsy business. That's really because they don't don't allow for transfers of shops. So this is just really super, super weird. It says in their terms of service, 
that you can't transfer shops for some kind of weird security reasons. But the weird part, it's a very normal thing to just sell a business, a small business to anyone else. And you can do that on Amazon. You can't do that on Etsy. They say it's because of security reasons, stuff similar to that. But it just seems weird in my opinion. You can do that on Amazon. So that's another huge reason why I would actually start on Amazon and not on Etsy if I started over in 2025. Another thing that is really, really, really important in my opinion is that Etsy has always been very ambiguous with their actual rules and their guidelines. They change a lot, which is kind of good that they experiment, but it always kind of feels kind of flaky, like it's all like up and down. Whereas Amazon is, as I mentioned before, it's kind of stable. The guidelines have been there for quite a long time. They kind of updated some things sometimes, but it's usually not unclear in any way. At least that's been my perception of it. It's usually kind of clear what you can put up there and what you cannot. Whereas for instance, Etsy, like before they made these new Etsy changes that I've talked about in this video right here, they said that the mockups has to come from a production partner, which like every single mockup on the platform was almost like bought from a third party and used as a mockup, basically used as a mockup within the listing. So they did allow it for basically every single listing for quite a while. And now they updated their policies and they say that you can use a mockup, but there's, there's still a lot of gray areas within the new ones too. And the point being is that you don't really know for sure what's allowed on the platform and what's not. What I can know for sure is that trademark infringement is of course not allowed. That's something that is obviously not allowed not allowed and that will eventually always lead to listings to get taken down and if you get too many of those like three to five I think or something like that too many infringement cases like that then you will your whole shop will be taken down there's just a lot of stuff that are quite ambiguous and you don't really know what they actually mean with everything I just feel it's hard to know what their actual stance is on stuff because they are not just crystal clear with what they actually allow on the platform, despite the new clarification of their Etsy terms of service. And with Amazon, it's always been very clear to me. I've never ever think I felt what can be allowed on the platform and what cannot be allowed on the platform, both with their ads and both with what type of content can be actually put on the platform. That's another huge reason on why I would actually do Amazon if I started over in 2025. But the last and I think the biggest reason is that Amazon has the biggest potential. I mean, Amazon has been around for quite a while now. They've just grown massively. If I think of e-commerce, I basically think of Amazon, which is kind of crazy. They also hold the biggest market share. I mean, almost like over like 30% of e-commerce sales overall is done on the Amazon marketplace, which is crazy to me. It's just such a big market share that they themselves have. Apart from that, they're super innovative. They have the biggest potential, in my opinion, because of their history by implementing, for instance, reviews uh, within their listings on e-commerce, which is now commonplace on all sites. I just say that Amazon is just something that will grow and get larger and larger and larger and just has the biggest potential. And if we can be early birds to do print on demand on the Amazon platform, that will just give you the biggest potential to be super successful as well. So if you're Considering starting your print on a man store on Amazon, then you should know that everything at the end just hangs on the design. I have a really simple process to do that. You can watch more about that here. I'm not a designer myself and you don't have to be. As long as you follow the simple steps that I outline, you can do very well, just like me. Anyhow, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.